Hello, welcome to section 4 of Rapid C++. In this section, we are going to cover functions and data structures. So this section, the first video will be on the dynamic memory allocation and as well as deallocation. Second video will be on functions. We will learn how to subdivide tasks. In the third video, we will cover scope which will cover the local variable scope as well as a global variable scope. And in the fourth video, we are going to cover data structures using struct command. And last video will be an exercise that will cover all the four previous topics, which is dynamic memory allocation functions, scope as well as data structure. So let's begin with the first video, dynamic memory allocation. In this video, we are going to learn dynamically allocate and deallocate memory. So let's get started. In all our previous examples, we were declaring the variables upfront with a certain amount of size. But in most of the practical problems, we may not know the exact size of a variable. And in such a case, we need to go for a dynamic memory allocation and deallocation. Now to accomplish that, C++ offers two operators, two specifically new operators than C. One is called new, the other is called delete. So the first one is used to allocate memory and the second one which is delete is used to deallocate or free up the memory. So in line number 8 we have a in point A which is pointed to an integer and the memory address that has been allocated is a new and then integer. So this is how memory is allocated so we have to use new and the type of memory that we want to use. So this will allocate one integer sized memory in dynamically and that will be assigned to a pointer which is in this case is a and if we assign a value to that pointer which is let's say in this case is 10 uh, so that memory address which has been dynamically allocated will now contain a value which is equals to 10 we can then use it just dereference and print that value on screen and once we are done with the use of a which is dynamically allocated we must free it up Otherwise, operating system will be unable to access this part of the memory. So to do that, we need to use the delete operator and then we need to just type in the pointer that the memory address is referring to. So let's build this. As you can see, we have dynamically allocated an integer variable. We have stored a value which is equal to 10 and then we have printed that. And finally, we have also deleted that. Now, as we can see in this example, new is creating one single variable. What if we need multiple variables or let's say an array? We can also do it very easily. So let's just modify this example a little bit. So once we put this bracket and the size, so this will instruct the compiler to allocate memory for five integer variables and store that in a pointer, which is a, a which is a of integer type. And uh, once we dereference the first pointer i mean memory address uh, it should point out to the first element in this array and we can also use the pointer arithmetic to store multiple numbers so now we have modified this example here in line number nine we are accessing the first element of this dynamically allocated memory and we are storing a value of 10 in line number 10, we are accessing the second element of that uh, dynamically allocated memory. We are storing a value of 20 and 11, 12, we are simply retrieving and printing them. And at the time of deallocation, now this syntax will change uh, slightly. So we just need to add this bracket here. Otherwise, it will only free up the first memory, which is the first element and the remaining four elements stay in the memory and will remain inaccessible to the operating system. As you can see, there are two changes here. First, we have to define the number of elements in the new operator itself. And at the time of deallocation, we need to add this bracket without any number in inside just to deallocate. So if we build this and run, as you can see, it has dynamically allocated five elements. We could have stored five elements one by one just to see for ourselves. And in the first element, we have stored number 10. Second element, we have number stored number 20. And the same has been printed and same has been printed correctly here. So in summary, in this video, we learned how to dynamically allocate and deallocate map variables and objects.